What is up guys, my name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database and in this continuation of the series of getting started with Cine Designer in 2018 or 17 if you're watching it a little bit early, uh, I'm gonna show you how to animate these cameras and dollies and then export them in a very fast way. So I am going to actually just make a whole new scene here. I'm gonna hit B, I'm gonna bring in this dolly and you may not have this if you're not a set designer user, but I'm gonna bring in one of my pre-made sets here. Uh, if you want these, they are all part of Set Designer, which is the same place you got Cine Designer. So I'm going to move this set there, and I'm going to make a camera move. I guess I should put a person in here. We're going to use an Adobe Fuse character, which you may not have or know how to use yet, but I have tutorials on that. Uh, these people come with Adobe uh, Cloud, essentially, if you're using Premiere or... After Effects or whatever, there's a program called Adobe Fuse, and these characters are free. You can just make them. They're pretty nice. Definitely the best place to get characters on the internet um, at the moment. That is, until I start making them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to animate this dolly. And I'm not going to use track. I'm just going to use just like if it was on the floor. So we're going to position it like this, and I'm going to want to actually look through it, first of all, like that. And we're going to open up these controls and let's see, I want to pan this camera over here like this. And I'm going to come up on the con on the height and I'm not going to use the, uh, the HUD because I don't like using it, but you definitely can. Or maybe I should, maybe I should use it. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is where I want to start. So if you look down here, we have the timeline. Okay, so just like you would in an NLE, you hit play and it's going to play through the timeline. And except in this case, you can keyframe like you would again in After Effects or Premiere, um, the positions of different things. And all we're gonna do is keyframe positions and rotations. Uh, at the beginning, we want it to be here. At the end, we want it to be there and it's gonna play in between them. That's the basics of this anyway. So to start, I think we could go to project. Is that right? Project info? Nope. Um, project, regular project. You can change the frames per second. I'll keep it at 30 just because that's the default. But if you want to use 24, you should use 24. So let's see. So let's make a five second camera move, right? So we're going to do uh, 30 times five, which is 150. Drag this over. So now we have 150 frames playing back at 30 frames per second. Pretty cool. So with the playhead over there, I'm left clicking and dragging this around. We're going to start at zero. I'm going to keyframe the things that are going to move. So that is one. Uh, the Fisher dolly itself. So this is position, scale, and rotation. We're only going to actually uh, key position. And I'm going to click these red dots next to them. Uh, we're actually only going to key in one direction, but I'm going to key all of them. And then I'm going to go all the way to 150. I'm going to move this to where I want it to be. So I want it to be there by the end, and I'm gonna just going to re-key all of them. And now, if I play back and forth, you'll see that it, it does the move. But now we, of course, need to animate the head as well. So I'm going to go back here, and we're going to animate the head. And we don't want to animate any of this stuff. We want to animate the controls, because that's where you control this thing from. So say I wanted to start here. I'm going to keep her centered-ish. And I'm going to key these two things, pan and tilt. Then I'm going to come all the way to the end, and I need to go back like this. And I'm going to key them again. So now it should more or less pan with her. So we've animated the position and we've animated the pan and tilt. Pretty easy. We can hit play. And depending on the scene complexity, um, it should play back pretty quickly. So now we're only watching the, the uh, behind the scenes view. But if I click on this one, whoops, uh, we will see the actual uh, through the camera. I don't know why I had to pause there. So. Let's do an animation now where we actually get this out as a file. So you could screen record this. <laughs> that would be one way to do it. But it's pretty simple now to be able to actually uh, make this to a movie, movie file or an image sequence. So one thing you want to consider doing is click this up here and hit Shift V, which is what? What is this thing? Display. I forget how you get to it here. Oh, it's view settings. Okay, you can do view settings or you can hit Shift V. I just have it memorized. Shift V. Or if I go to uh, view settings, that'll do this. You need to go to view and tinted border. You want to make this a hundred so you can see what the camera is going to see. And we haven't dealt with render settings. I guess this is the first one. We're going to go to uh, this and to start, what are we on output? We're going to want to say that it's 1280 by 720. That's fine. You can make it 
whatever you want, 30 frames per second, and you're gonna change from current frame to, um, well actually, let's just, let's just start here. If you do current frame, it'll just render uh, one frame, the current frame that it's on here. So let's render from number one. So you're gonna wanna do view, use as render view, and then hit shift R, okay? And it's gonna render using the standard renderer, which isn't so bad. But that's what we're not gonna, we're not gonna actually use this because that took four seconds and we wanna use something that's even faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to render settings up here and we're gonna switch it from standard to hardware OpenGL. And that's gonna be really fast. And there's a couple different settings in here. Uh, I'm gonna use the OpenGL that's enhanced. I don't think I need any of this other stuff. Yeah, but you can turn on depth of field and have bokeh and all sorts of stuff and a bunch of stuff here, but I'm just gonna use that, just default, it's really easy. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna hit Shift R again. And that was really fast. That's what the viewport looks like, right? Really fast render, one second. Probably actually took less, I would guess. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to output and we're gonna change it to all frames, okay? And if you do all frames, it's gonna render all 150 frames here. Uh, now we wanna go to save. And I'm gonna save this somewhere. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. This is on my downloaded assets. I'm gonna make a new folder called uh, Dolly Animation and click save. I guess I have to give it name, a name, Dolly Animation. Okay, so what you can do now is you can either render a sequence of images and bring them together in Photoshop, uh, not Photoshop, um, in Premiere or Final Cut. You can make them JPEGs or whatever you want, but I think you can also just do an MP4 and I'm gonna try that, I don't typically do that. Um, that should work. So now with this at all frames, we're using, um, we're saving to an MP4, we'll see how this looks. I'm going to make sure that I have used this render view instead of this one. Hit Shift R. And maybe I made too many frames, but look how fast that's going. That is a fast render, and that's why we use the hardware renderer. And uh, I'm gonna let this render here because this is so fast. I like it. Okay, so that made all the frames. You can also hit play here and play it back. But say you want to actually email this to the director or something like that, you should be able to now, that's my OBS, I should be able to go to Dolly Animation, and we made an MP4, hooray, look. It's really stuttery for some reason, but um, there you go. So you made an OpenGL preview render, and you can mail this to people, it's a pretty small file, five megabytes, you can edit it, you can do what you want, and then hey, say you even want to make a, um, a behind the scenes view at the same time while well, we have time here. And uh, something like this, maybe. It's a good BTS. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna see if I can check. I think I have to change the name, so I'm gonna call this BTS. Still an MP4, but you gotta change the name. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure to use this as a render view. I'm gonna hit Shift R again. So now I'm making a behind the scenes render view, and I have it through the camera, and you could put them together. Uh, for Instagram or for whatever, send it to the director. And this is OpenGL hardware rendering. In Maya, it's called a Play Blast. I haven't even saved this file, it's bad, bad form, but here we are. Here's our OpenGL render. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, it's a really fast way to get animations in and out. We looked at animation and I would say that if you're just getting started in this, I would work like this for quite a while before you even start to light or render with lighting or use physical render, anything like that, just use the viewport and the OpenGL, get used to this workflow. Um, this is the core layout skills you're gonna need to move on to rendering with physical, rendering with Redshift and doing more advanced stuff. This is the basics, so start with the hardware rendering, the OpenGL, uh, get this down really well, be able to make some simple animations, and in the next video we're gonna look at rendering with physical renderer and using some lights.